What is up guys? I'm back with another video and today we're going to be looking at, we're going to be resuming uh, when I was covering in some other videos a few months back when I was looking at some hematology and oncology, specifically looking at leukemias. And today we're going to have another mnemonic and on the mnemonic today we're going to be looking at acute lymphoblastic leukemia. These leukemias, um, they have a high, lot of high yield points, a lot of buzzwords, but it's very easy if you've studied this and then after two weeks you forget a lot of the, uh, the buzzwords and, and kind of which one goes with which and some of the symptoms and how does it present on blood smear and whatnot. I'm hoping all these mnemonics that I've developed and I've kind of uh, developed over time when I was studying for this stuff will really help you as well. So let's move right into this. First of all, what is ALL? ALL just stands for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Now, the first thing you need to know, in acute leukemias, they are defined by the presence of blast. What are blast? Blast are just the precursor to the cells that we're specifically talking to about for that cancer. For example, in ALL, we're talking about lymphocytes, right? ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. But specifically, we're, this L stands for lymphoblastic. Blastic means that it is a precursor before you actually get to the final form of the cell. Uh, of basically that we're referring to. So in this one, let me just cover the, quickly the hematopoietic uh, cycle. So the, so the hematopoietic cycle. This is happening in your bone marrow and your bone marrow has a method of producing almost all of the primary cells of the entire body or the main, let's say, immune fighting cells of the body and the red blood cells and platelets and whatnot. And the way it does this, and it all happens in the bone marrow, so this happens in the bone marrow, it starts with one general cell, and that's called a hematopoietic stem cell. This, this hematopoietic stem cell can decide whether it's going to split into the common myeloid progenitor cell or the common lymphoid progenitor cell. Now, don't let the big words kind of scare you off and get confused. Myeloid is just referring to myeloid cells. The myeloid cells are the granulocytes, monocytes, red blood cells, and platelets, and megakaryocytes. Of course, megakaryocytes produce platelets. So those are what the myeloid cells produce. So that has a lot of things to remember, but it's easy to remember what all comes from the myeloid cells if you just remember what comes from the progenitor cell. On the other side, if we need progenitor cells or lymphoid progenitor cells, then uh, we're going to go to this lymphoid project, common lymphoid progenitor cell, and it is going to be turned into a small lymphocyte, which that's not really important. But just know that the common lymphoid progenitor cell can turn into eventually, after some steps, either a B lymphocyte or a T lymphocyte. But there is a precursor cell here, and you're going to see that there's a precursor cell to each uh, before you turn into whether it be a T lymphocyte or a B lymphocyte. Now, in this particular cancer, and in all acute, listen to my words, in all acute leukemias, acute, not chronic, acute, in all acute leukemias, it is defined by having a greater than 20% uh, of blast in the blood smear or the CBC. It must be greater than 20%. If it is not greater than 20% of the cell that we're talking about, the specific blast, whether it be a lymphoblast, like in the disease we're going to talk about today, or the leukemia, or a myeloblast, it does not fit the definition of uh, leukemia. It is then called something else, which I'm going to cover in another video. So it must be greater than 20%. So this is defined as greater than 20% lymphoblast on a blood smear or in CBC once you measure it and do labs. Okay, so that is the very basic, basic definition of ALL. Now, where is ALL happening on this pathway? It's happening right in here, basically. Not down here. These are mature cells. In all acute leukemias, in all the acute leukemia, so AML, ALL, right? The two main, let's just say those are the two main acute leukemias. In the acute leukemias, the, the proliferating cell is happening further upstream from the, than from the mature cells. So if we're talking about acute myeloid leukemia, we're talking about the myeloblast. Or we're talking about way farther upstream. So we're talking about way up here. We're not talking about the mature cells down here. That would be then a chronic leukemia, which we're going to cover in another video. Actually, one of them I've already covered, CLL. 
So specifically in acute leukemia, so the first thing you should do, you're reading a question and you see it's got a really long paragraph with all these labs. So the first thing I always do when I'm doing test questions is I look at the question and the answer choices and I can kind of get a general idea of what the question is asking about. If you're seeing all sorts of answer choices like this, all the different uh, cancers that they're going to name out or leukemias, I'm sorry, they're talking about, say it's a hematology question. The first thing you need to do is quickly rem just send this to your brain, jot this down in your brain, that when they say acute, and they're referring to myeloid leukemia or lymphocytic leukemia, it is specifically talking about the cells, the cells that are basically out of control dividing or higher up, whether it be AML, the common myeloid progenitor, or ALL, the common lymphoid progenitor, okay? So today's discussion is going to be right here, ALL, okay. I had to say all that to kind of build a quick foundation, and now we're going to get into the cool part, which you probably came for, which was the mnemonic, because you can study these diseases all day, everything will make sense, and then two weeks later, you forget everything. This is going to help with that, believe me. ALLs, we already talked about it. It stands for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I said it's defined by a greater than 20% lymphoblast on CBC or blood smear. Now, how do you recognize that these cells, this is an ALL when you look at a histo slide? Well, you can run a test that tests for something called TDT. And, that, and there's a big fancy word behind it, but it's usually always written as TDT. Um, if you want to know the word, you can look it up. It's, it's a really big, complex word. So, but basically just know this TDT. These lymphoblasts are specific for having TDT in the cell. Specific. Now, let me emphasize something to you. I said lymphoblast, blast. The blast have TDT. First of all, it would be important to know what is a TDT. A TDT is just a specific DNA polymerase that is only found in the lymphoblast. Let me, now let me show you something. It is not found in lymphocytes. If they tell you a B cell or a T cell, they, they do not have TDT. Only the lymphoblast, you know, that whether it be a T lymphoblast, you know, or a B lymphoblast, whatever, TDT is only found in those. It's also not found on the other side of the pathway. You're not going to see TDT in um, myeloblast. That's a disease, a completely different leukemia. That's called AML. And it's also not going to be found in all of the mature cells that come from myeloblast. Like all the granulocytes, you're not going to see TDT positivity in eosinophils, neutrophils, etc. That's why this is so important. If a test question tells you that the, the test they ran, they ran a TDT test and it is positive in the blood smear, the blood sample was positive for TDT, you know we are dealing with an ALL as long as it's greater than 20% blast. That's important too. It is not acute lymphoblastic leukemia if you don't reach the threshold of greater than 20% lymphoblast on the CBC. Okay? So, TDT. Now, how do you remember this? We know it's a DNA polymerase. I explained about the uh, what percentage of lymphoblasts it must meet the threshold. It must have TDT positivity because all lymphoblasts have that TDT, which is a DNA polymerase. How do you remember that TDT is associated with ALL? Just look at the word. A-L-L. -L. What word does that make? All. In the English language, all, all of something is like the total of something or the complete of something. So the total of something, total, TD, like for total, or you can even use the T and then the other T, total. Regardless, you're going to, it's, it sounds a lot like total. When you look at TDT, total TD, that reminds you, oh, this is the one that is TDT positive. So when you see TDT on a test, deliberately get used to, when you see TDT, say total. And that will help you remember, oh, we're talking a total of something, the complete of something, all of something, A-L-L. -L. Now, that's the first tip. That helped me a lot. Then, the next thing, we're going to come back to this later. There's two subtypes of this. Remember, let me go back to the previous slide. I showed you in this slide that there is a common lymphoid progenitor cell. What is not being shown here is that there is actually a progenitor cell for the T cell, there's like a pro T cell or a T cell blast. And then there's also a pro B cell. And they're both considered uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia if you have massive proliferation at least 20% 
of of these, but usually you you can have one or the other. And so there's two types. Are you having a proliferation of the pro B cells or are you having a proliferation of the pro T cells? So they present differently. So let's go over both of them. The first one, the B cell type of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. What happens in this? Well, in this particular, first of all, what's the cause? What cause? What's the general etiology for this in most cases? There's two things that can cause this, and they're both translocations. The first one is a translocation of 1221. This one is the one that is less dangerous, and it's common in children. And the second one is a translocation of 922. This should look really familiar to you because this is the Philadelphia chromosome or what's called a Philadelphia translocation of chromosome 9 to chromosome 22. This is typically more dangerous. So this one is more dangerous. In other words, brings a worse prognosis and it's common in adults. I don't have a way to remember this. I've tried to develop something. I just can't do it. So drill that into your head. What I do have a, a method to remember, though, for this is that these translocations are specific to BALL. We know there's two of them, though. How do we know that? Because when you look at BALL, it starts with a B. B is the, like you could remember the first letter of for B, then it makes the word by. B for by. By equals two, right? That's an English word that means two of something. So by always means two. That means there is two translocations. And if that don't help enough, two starts with the letter T translocation. But basically you just need to know B for by, two of them. So that should remind you, oh yeah, it's those two translocations. So then just drill these two in your head and what's the common uh, population for each and which one's more dangerous. So that's the cause of the T cell specific or the pro T cell ALL. I'm sorry, B cell. I take that back. Sorry, B cell. The B, the pro B cell specific ALL. That is the cause of that. Now, another thing you need to know about this one is that chemotherapy, chemotherapy works. It responds well. It responds well. So it works well in this. Chemotherapy responds very well in the B, uh, the pro B cell type of ALL. Now, this particular type, this is very high yield. It meta it is prone, it is prone to metastasis, metastasis to two kind of primary important places. Now it can metastasize in a lot of places, but these two are very important because of how they act. It can it can metastasize to the brain, thus the CSF. So that could actually be brain or spinal cord but I'm going to tell you why I wrote brain here. And then to the testes. The reason that's important, because both of these, the brain and the testes, have a blood-brain barrier. So the first one, brain, blood-brain barrier. The other one is a blood-testicular barrier. Both of these have a barrier that chemotherapy cannot reach into the area, whether it be the CSF or the testes. Due to this barrier, chemotherapy, if you were injected into the, you know, into your blood system, it cannot reach the CSF or the neural system, the nervous system, and then it can't reach the testes because of these, these, uh, blood barriers that each of these two have. Now, how do you, rem so then in other words, what do you do about that? You give, you can give chemotherapy. The patient's responding well, but the problem is, say they've metastasized to the, to the brain and the testes. What you're going to do is directly inject chemotherapy. You're going to directly inject chemotherapy into the CSF and into the testes. And you do this prophylactically because you're expecting the ALL to metastasize there. So you don't want that to happen because that would be a really poor prognosis, especially to the CSF. So you inject chemotherapy directly into these tissues here, therefore bypassing the blood barrier that each of these have. Now, how do you remember that the B cell specific type of ALL has these, has this common metastasis to the brain and to the testes. It's because, just look at the word, B-A-L-L, what does that stand for? Ball, like balls, right? This is slang. So balls, the B, look at the beginning letter, B, so the B subtype of A-L-L, A-L-L, sorry, stands for, B for brain, and balls is slang for testes, right? So now, that helps you remember, oh yeah, I have to be careful here because this particular subtype of ALL is very commonly uh, metastasizes to the brain and the testes. 
And when it does metastasize, the chemotherapy can't reach it. So we need to do a, a prophylactic chemotherapy injection directly into both of these tissues when we know the patient has this form of ALL. Okay, so that is BALL. And um, that kind of covers a lot of the really important ideas behind BALL. The last thing to know is this. I want you to remember, I'm going to go to the next slide here. Oops, sorry. Actually, I'll just clear this. In BALL, what does that stand for? That just stands for the B cell, the pro B cell type of ALL. So that means you're making tons, tons of these B blast, these B lymphoblasts, right? Because all of these were would eventually go on to form the, the regular B cell right all these blasts but they can't there's you know there's a problem so maybe some of them will but a lot of them are stuck in this cycle because there's just too many here now what does that mean well I want you to remember some of the common CD markers that are present on B cell blasts that are not present on T cell blasts the three important markers CD 19 CD 20 CD 10 I would say these are the most two, the two most important but also no CD 10 so if they tell you, now let's say that they've described, they've told you in a test question that they've run a TDT test and it's positive and we see a blast count, a blast count greater than 20%. So we know this is ALL, but now we need to figure out which ALL. Is it the B, is it the pro B cell type or the pro T cell type? Then they tell you in the question, we found that one of the blast cells has CD19 on its surface. That tells you right away, we know this is the pro B cell type of ALL. Do you see how the questions could get you? There's a lot of little intricate details to know. Or they could also tell you, just like CD19, they could tell you it was you know CD20, or they could tell you CD10. Any of those, they could tell you. That should help you remember, oh, so this is a B cell. Now, let me clear this again. We're going to move into the T cell type. So I've told a lot of the high yield stuff for the B cell. I've given some clever mnemonics in that. The T cell type of ALL is just the opposite. Now this is also blast, but this is the specific cell that's being formed, the specific lymphoblast is the T lymphoblast. So these cells are the blast that would eventually go on to form a regular T cell. But there's a massive neoplastic proliferation, so therefore a lot of them would not be able to eventually fully mature. And then if they did fully mature, maybe there would be issues and they would have, uh, they wouldn't be functioning properly. So nonetheless, you're having tons of these pro T cells in this particular situation. Now, what's important in this one? Uh, I also want to go ahead and throw this in here. I highly suggest you watch Pathoma because Pathoma covers these very well. I'm just kind of supplementing mnemonics into a lot of the kind of foundations that Pathoma sets in. One of the clever things that Pathoma teaches is Pathoma teaches that you use the T in this word, and the T kind of describes how this will present. The T stands for thymic mass, and the T also stands for teenagers. Now, Pathoma stopped there, and a lot of other resources stopped there, along with going on to tell you about some of the CD markers and uh, how these things can present and whatnot. I'm going to go and I'm going to add something very high yield here that a lot of resources don't talk about. If a patient were to have a thymic mass, remember that that's in the mediastinum, which is in your chest, basically. So here's our person, and here's the here's the chest of the person. Here's his feet. All right. If he has a thymic mass, and it goes long enough untreated, remember that the lungs are right here on each side. What's going to happen is that mass is going to continue to get bigger and bigger, and then the lungs, it's going to compress your chest, and you're going to have respiratory difficulty, whether that be shortness of breath, you can have shortness of breath, strider, you name it. You can have all sorts of respiratory dysfunction. You can have changes in O2 sat, whatnot, if that gets large enough. You can also have coughing and, and all this kind of stuff as well due to this. So that's that may sound common sense to you, but when you get a test question, they're not gonna they genuinely won't tell you the patient has a thymic mass. They will describe the patient will describe symptoms of respiratory difficulty, and then you'll look at a blood smear, you'll see that there are blast. And they may not give you a lot of those other details about TDT and all this. So you have to be able to decipher just that, oh, the presence of a thymic, the presence of a thymic mass and maybe the, even the age group that it's a teenager could, that's the most common age group here in the T, the T type of ALL. 
that should help you decipher that we're leaning towards T-A-L-L, okay? Now, what are the markers for T-A-L-L? We talked about the markers in B-A-L-L, and I told you the markers are CD19, CD20, and CD10. In T-A-L-L, it won't have any of those. It's going to have, now here's what, here, here's where Pathoma did a fantastic job. It's going to have any, anywhere, any of these from CD2 to CD8. And it won't, so as long, if it has any of those and doesn't have these, it's talking about the T type of ALL. And that will help you because if they tell you this patient has a CD, a CD7 positivity. I'm just making this up, right? This is just a mnemonic to help you remember. There may not be a specific CD7, but any CD that is applicable to T cells within this range, think of the T cell type. So if they give you a CD marker that's within that range and they give you a patient with respiratory difficulty, symptoms of anemia, um, and it's a teenager, you're, you need to really be highly leaning towards the T cell type of ALL, the T cell type of ALL. Okay. So those are very high yield details. So now I'm going to remove all this and we're going to cover just one quick last overview of ALL because uh, in the next video, I'm going to jump to kind of the final one I didn't cover yet that has a lot of subcomponents. That's CML. I didn't talk about CML yet because CML is kind of a strange outlier in the way it presents in a, in that it has a lot of different subtypes and possibilities. And that the fact that it's called a myeloproliferative disorder, so it kind of stands a kind of stands out by itself as an outlier compared to the acute leukemias and chronic leukemias. It's not technically considered a chronic leukemia, even though it's called CML. So, in ALL, you got to have a blast percentage, specifically lymphoblast, greater than 20%. If it does not, this is so important. If it doesn't reach 20%, it is not ALL. Remember that. It's going to be TDT positive. Why? Because TDT is a DNA polymerase specific only to lymphoblast, not lymphocytes, not myeloblast, not myelocytes, lymphoblast, the precursor lymphoid cells. Okay, lymphocytes. TDT positivity. How do you remember that? Because if you just look at the word, all. All is the total of something. Total, TD, total. So that helps you remember that. What else is important? That there's two classifications in this. You can have BALL. BALL has two possibilities. A translocation of 1221. That's in children. That's the one that's less dangerous. And a translocation of 922. That's the more dangerous one. That's what's called the Philadelphia chromosome. So you have to remember that because they may not tell you 922. They may tell you just we've noticed a Philadelphia translocation in this particular patient who has leukemia. Then you need to know, oh, okay. Um, I also want to throw in translocation 922 is actually common in another type of leukemia, which is in a video I haven't covered yet. So this is a outlier. This is the rare subtype. It's important to know that you can sometimes have a translocation of 922 in this because translocation of 922 can also present in another type of leukemia. And so just that's why it's so important to know all these other things to help you lean towards this. So these are the two possibilities. And remember the translocation 922 or the Philadelphia uh, chromosome translocation is common in adults and it's worse. It has a worse prognosis. So that's B cell. Remember also metastasis to brain and testes or brain and balls. How do you remember that? How do you remember that this happens commonly in this subtype? Because just look at the word ball, B-A-L-L, ball is a slang for testes and B uh, stands B for brain and B for balls. So that helps you remember metastasis to those areas that chemotherapy typically cannot reach because of the blood barriers of each of those, the blood testicular barrier, the blood brain barrier. All right, then we move on to the T type of ALL. The T type of ALL just use the T like Pathoma taught us. T for teens and T for thymic mass. And you, it's so high yield. A lot of resources do not tell you this. I'm telling you this now because there are test questions. I promise. They will, they will just, they won't tell you the patient has a thymic mass. They will just give you a patient who has respiratory distress. 
any sort of respiratory distress, strider, cough, these kind of things. It's trying to get you to lean towards some type of mediastinal mass, and that is present in the TALL type. Also remember in the TALL type, the CD markers ranges anywhere from CD2 to CD8. Up in the BALL type, the CD markers are CD19, 20, and 10. So any of those they could give you. So that's also important as well. Okay, so that covers the high yield points of acute lymphoblastic leukemia with the two subtypes, the B, the pro B type ALL and the pro T type ALL. I've given plenty of mnemonics to help remember a lot of the high, high yield details. I'm sorry I couldn't think of any for a lot of the translocations and CD markers, but I'm hoping that you've already learned a lot of these CD markers as you've gone through um, immunology and biochem and whatnot. Okay, so I hope this helped. If it did, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. You know the procedure. And um, I will cover the final uh, leukemia that I haven't covered in the main types, then I'll get into some other ones, which is going to be CML. And that's going to be a little bit of a bigger topic. And hopefully I'll bring a lot more mnemonics for that one as well. Check out the other videos on CLL and my video on acute promyelocytic leukemia or AML, um, which is on my YouTube page. They're also very good and have a ton of mnemonics as well. I'll see you in another video. Bye guys.